Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. My Savior forever, He sought me and He bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is to Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing Family and friends, the uh, scriptures tell us in Psalm 116, verse 15, that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So we're here this morning to honor a saint of the Lord, one who had lived his life as a Christian, one who had received salvation at a young age and was an example to many others throughout his life of what it meant to live as a saint. And the Lord calls that precious. I've gotten to know the Taylors a little better over the past few months. Obviously, uh, COVID had disrupted so much of our lives and so many of the things that had been uh, a part of our routines. And part of my routine was to uh, stand at the door at Emmanuel on Sunday mornings and greet uh, families as they would come in. And a regular pair that I would see every week was Brother Don and Miss Artie as they would make their way in. And uh, their daughter, daughter Stacia was so faithful serving in various different areas with their children and uh, nursery department. And uh, so part of that routine was to count on seeing them come in every week. And then as uh, Mr. Don's health began to, to decline, I've spent some time with the family, gotten to know them a little better. And uh, Miss, Miss Stacia has shared a few stories that I want to, to share real quick. And then... Uh, a tribute that she had written. I'm going to read that in just a moment as well. But she says that uh, Mr. Don was trustworthy and a diplomatic friend to all. And I believe that I experienced that myself as I got to know him. She said he was a, a treat-toting grandpa that was always flipping off lights to, to save a kilowatt. Uh, I'm not sure if he was trying to conserve energy or he just wanted to keep his paycheck for himself since he worked for that power company and maybe not wanted to turn it right back over to them. Uh, they had moved around, and one of the places they lived, they, they actually bought a bed and breakfast over in, in Americas, and she says that that became a, uh, a place that college students would, uh, became a part of their family, and that food and shelter and, and sound advice was a, was a part of that, part of their life there. And uh, she shared with me that, that he was the only man she ever knew of to get pulled over driving in a funeral procession. She said that he was uh, maybe driving a bit slow. He never got in a hurry. Uh, things was always on his time, and, and he actually got pulled over one time in a, in a funeral procession. Uh, she says they also had this tradition uh, of kind of hanging an ugly Christmas wreath, that he would sneak over, find a, a, a real conspicuous place to hang that thing, and then kind of wait until she would find it. So just some precious memories that the, that the family has together. And then... Uh, so Donnie Wilson Taylor, Don took his last breath on Thursday, October 14th, 2021 at his home with his dedicated wife, Ardeth, and favorite daughter, Stacia, by his side. A God-fearing man, a God-fearing family man, born in God's country, Southeast Georgia in 1948 to the late, to the late Jack and Minnie Lee Taylor, which I've observed her here beside him this morning. His father passed away while Don was in high school, just prior to the meeting of the love of his life, Miss Ardeth LaRue. They loved and lived a quiet life together, happily doing ordinary chores and always putting each other first. They recently celebrated their
their 53rd wedding anniversary together. Quite an accomplishment. Don graduated from Waycross High School and always knew he wanted to attend the Georgia Institute of Technology. He immediately began studying electrical engineering in 1966 while courting and preparing for marriage to Miss Ardeth. In 1968, they married at Second Baptist Church and together raised two children, Stacia Marie and Zachary. In the spring of 1972, Don earned an electrical engineering degree and continued to work at Georgia Power for over 36 years until retiring at the age of 52, a dedicated man to his work and to his job. After a brief retirement, he joined the competition with a similar position at Mitchell EMC for five years. After a second retirement, he began teaching in the same field. While working as a traveling instructor at Georgia Transmission Corporation, he enjoyed seeing previous employees and old friends that understood his chosen profession. Don was blessed with neighbors over the years that became family that shared many holidays, milestones, and everyday life together. Their children quickly became his adopted grandchildren that brought pure joy and value to his life, even in the final days. And some of those are Kevin and Melissa Carden, their three sons, Cody, Alex, and Brett. Sweet Cora, a lovable Belgian Melano, I'm not sure if that's the right pronunciation, and many cats. George and Heather Braddock and their five children, Haley, Ben, Samuel, Liliana, and Valmay. Barney, a friendly chocolate retriever that roams the neighborhood for treats. Nick and Allison Robertson, their, their two sons, Bennett and Brooks, the unforgettable tramp, neighborhood watchdog, and enthusiastic greeter. And one granddaughter, Anna Lee Taylor. Don followed the Bible and always held the word of God in his heart. A faithful member of Emmanuel Baptist Church and thankful for the ability to live stream services, even the Sunday before his death. Don was a dedicated community volunteer, always willing to help a stranger that eventually would become a friend. He was a lifelong keeper of bungee cords, old hoses, ropes, spare electrical parts, and a multitude of genuinely clever tools to solve any challenge. I think all of us men have that stash stuff we just can't quite get away. We'll need it one day. His 10-point plan helped him execute perfectly any task at hand. His meticulous planning helped many and always left a favorable impression. Don had two brothers, Denny Taylor, wife Ann, and Eldon Taylor, wife Maxine. As you maybe heard from that tribute written by Stacia, Brother Don was a power man. He worked in the power industry his whole life. In fact, worked there for over 40 years. But friends and family, brothers and sisters, standing here today, I'm confident there's another power that Mr. Don would tell you had a much bigger impact in his life. You see in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, we read that Paul proclaimed, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. I mentioned this earlier, but but Mr. Don submitted to that power at the young age of 12 when he accepted Jesus Christ into his heart as his Savior at Second Baptist Church here in Waycross. And because of this, we can have a confidence. We can, we can be bold in stating that he's in the presence of our Lord even now as we're here. So while he spent his years on earth bringing electrical power to his fellow Georgians because of the power of the gospel, he will have the privilege to spend eternity with perhaps some other fellow Georgians, but more importantly, with all the saints that have come down through the ages. He's there this morning. So scripture says that all who have received forgiveness for their sins are immediately ushered into the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Miss Artie, Miss Stacia, that's where he is right now. He's there this morning, worshiping at the feet of our Savior. Heaven, that place we've all heard about, perhaps dreamed about, heard sermons about, looked our whole lives, looked forward to that place our whole lives. That is now his home. In Philippians chapter 3, Paul speaks about some honors and accolades he had accomplished in his time on this earth. This, a, a lot of different things he had accomplished, but then Paul says, 
when I consider what I've gained in Christ, I consider all of those things loss. You see, Paul wasn't saying that those things were insignificant or unimportant, but he was saying when you compare, they, they pale in comparison to the extent that I, I count those things as loss. I've just read in a, a list of things that described Don Taylor, an impressive list, a dedicated life of marriage, a, a dedicated life to a career. But standing today, worshiping his Savior, I'm confident that he's seeing much greater, much higher, much loftier things today. And he would, he would tell us that the things on this earth, while as great as they may have been, it's nothing compared to what he's experiencing even now. And so we can, have, we can have comfort in that. We can have comfort knowing that he's in a better place experiencing things that, that we'll never experience on this earth, but we, we one day will have that opportunity. And so while we can take comfort in that, I also want, to, want you to know that we can be comforted knowing that one day that's our home. But you see, Scripture teaches that we're all sinners. The scripture teaches that we're, we're born as sinners and then we sin by our own choice. And so that, that, that problem of those sins, that, that's a problem that we have to have a solution to. As a power man, Mr. Don helped bring power to many homes and, and some of that power would, would run a water heater that would heat the water so that we could cleanse our physical bodies. We could take showers, we could, we could clean and do the things that we need to do but there's a power that is also available for us to clean that, clean that sin that I just spoke about. There's a power that's available for each and every one of us, and I encourage you, brothers and sisters and friends and family, to examine yourself this morning to make sure that you're ready just like Brother Don was ready. He knew where he was going. The family knows where he is today. But while we're still here on this earth, we have the opportunity for, our, for each of us to know as well where we're going. The scripture says that Jesus died for our sins. He was buried, and on the third day, he rose again to life. And in Philippians chapter 3, Paul calls that the power of the resurrection. The power of the resurrection. Brother Don knew a lot about power. This morning, he knows a lot more about power. Today, he knows about the greatest power that there is. So I, I ask you this morning to examine your heart, examine your life. And if you never have done so, call upon Jesus today and you too can experience the power that he brought when he was raised to new life. I ask you, if you've never done that, to just simply admit that you're a sinner. Call upon Jesus for the forgiveness of those sins and receive salvation today. If Brother Don could come back this morning, that would be his request of you today then you could have that comfort knowing not only is he there, but you too could spend eternity in heaven. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for the encouragement of your word, the truth that each of us have the opportunity to receive forgiveness of our sins and a promise of a hope and a life eternal in heaven. You told us that you're going back to prepare a place, and so we know that, that those places have been prepared for us for everyone who would call upon you for the forgiveness of sins. And God, I thank you that you extended that offer to Don Taylor as a 12-year-old boy, and he responded and accepted that gift of salvation. And then he lived it out the remainder of his days. Lord, he modeled that in his life. Thank you for giving us examples that we can follow and we can see how to live as Christians and how to love and to take care of others. Lord, I pray that these words would be a comfort to Miss Artie and Station, to the other family members and the friends gathered here this morning. And Lord, I do pray that everyone in the sound of my voice would make that calling sure this morning to know that they are on their way to heaven, that they've had their sins forgiven. God, you love us. You've provided that way, and we are so thankful for it. We're thankful that you've given us the scripture that we can read it, we can understand it. Lord, I pray your blessings over this family, over this day. And God, I pray that in the days ahead, they would be able to stand strong and confident 
knowing where their loved one is and knowing that one day they'll have the opportunity to be reunited and to live forever with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in his name that I pray this morning. Amen. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He bled and died to buy. that promise in your word. Help us to experience it in our lives. God, I pray your hand upon this family in the days ahead. Give them strength, give them peace, give them comfort. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen.